my content, check out this new channel I recently started called IT List. It's a place for other interests I have that don't fit in with the content on this channel, and a few that might. Like this one I just did on the top 10 most famous magnetic motors. I'll drop a link in the description below. One of the more difficult things to do when designing a rotary permanent magnetic motor force system is to get your device to rotate more than one cycle. I've been testing multiple configurations lately and decided to try implementing a flywheel effect. So I designed and 3D printed this adapter to attach a simple low friction bearing to an aluminum disc that I'll be using for a rotor in these tests. It's important to also point out that aluminum is affected by magnetic fields and the interaction between the rotor and stator magnets will cause eddy currents. This is intentional as I wanted to explore how different magnetic effects would react to various configurations of magnets on the rotor. These first tests were designed to angle the magnetic fields of magnets on the rotor into a tighter field in the direction of the stator assembly. The thing you'll notice is that when you add enough magnets to the rotor, with the correct spacing to complete one full spin cycle, it generally stops approximately one inch from completing a full 360 degree rotation. I've always referred to this as the one inch barrier. Most of these devices exhibit an area of resistance at the opening of the gate, which are the configurations arranged in the stator assemblies. When you place the rotor in the spot where it overcomes this resistance, the opposing magnetic forces repel the rotor to the point where it enters that resistance once more. This is one of the reasons that people with a limited understanding of this effect liken magnets to springs or rubber bands. To a layman, it's like using a slingshot or catapult. By placing magnets on the rotor just past the area of the strongest repulsion in the stator assembly, the rotor spins around until it encounters the same opposing field and cogs as it hits an invisible wall of magnetic flux. With a magnet, you're dealing with electron spins though. Magnets are not static, as most people believe, and they are definitely not springs. As R.P. Feynman points out, it's not possible to understand the magnetic effects of materials in an honest way from the point of view of classical physics. Such magnetic effects are completely quantum mechanical phenomena, yet that is exactly what most people attempt to do. The reality of what magnetic fields are actually doing is far more interesting. I'll get into that a little bit more shortly. The four attached magnetic assemblies that I'm using to spin the rotor are called magnetic gates. This is the configuration of the magnets in each gate. Four of the magnets in each gate assembly were custom cut with a diamond blade on a wet saw, and the housing assemblies were printed with a 3D printer out of PLA plastic. They are actually held together by the opposing magnetic fields of the magnets, assisted by the exact sizing of the holders. Nothing is glued or taped in place. I say that only to share the extreme care that is taken to design and test some of these configurations properly. Several of these configurations produce two or three complete rotations, so it's possible that if I added more stators that the result would increase exponentially. It takes several days to 3D print assemblies like this, and many of the magnets would need to be custom cut, so that's something I might try at some point. But what I've already assembled is sufficient to test several arrangements of magnets to determine which are more favorable to experiment with in the future. I also noted that in some cases the opposing magnetic fields between the rotor and stators caused the rotor to rock back and forth and that seemed to aid in rotation. I shook the rotor slightly in a couple of tests as I fed the rotor magnets into the stator assembly to demonstrate and the rotor completed two to three complete rotations. I considered redesigning the bearing assembly so it would keep it slightly off balance as the rotor spins. I'm not certain if that would aid in rotation or not, but it's something worth exploring, and I believe I might know a good way to do that effectively. 
Sometimes I think we might design things a little too uniform or think of them in a linear fashion rather than finding a way to let the magnetic forces react to one another in a more natural way. Nothing in nature is flat or even. Even the magnetization process of magnets isn't consistently uniform. They tend to vary slightly in field strength and intensity. Accommodating that could greatly aid in constructing a permanent magnet rotary device. I had some pretty favorable results using these small rectangular magnets, but quickly ran out of the supply I had before being able to completely cover the entire rotor with them. I restarted the rotor from various spots, and each time it accelerated through the series of magnets. So this might be worth pursuing further testing if I happen to order more of these magnets in the future. I did have some of these larger rectangular magnets though, and decided to test them out as well. The results did not start out as favorable as the smaller ones, but since I have a large supply in this size, I decided to keep adding them until I completed a full cycle around the rotor. It may not be readily noticeable, but I narrowed the gap between the magnets in each cycle so that the magnetic fields would gradually increase in strength. This also keeps things from being too symmetrical as you don't generally want that in one of these types of assemblies. I learned this particular technique from studying Howard Johnson's work. This is a diagram of how he employed this method in one of his magnetic motor patents. I also tried adding these two separate gates simply for fun. They weren't designed to work with magnets arranged in this configuration on the rotor, but it never hurts to try different things and record your results. Sometimes I found myself pleasantly surprised. These secondary gates are based on one of Howard Johnson's magnetic gates. This is how the magnets are configured. By angling the magnets in this way, it alters the direction of the electron spins of the magnets and you can actually attract the north pole side of the magnetic arrangements on the rotor to the north pole facing side of the magnetic gate once you're within one half inch of the gate opening. I've demonstrated this before, it's a really interesting phenomenon that I would encourage anyone interested in these types of systems to experiment with. I can demonstrate it in a video, but you really need to experience it for yourself. This type of magnetic gate works best when you employ this arc geometry to the magnets I'm using on the rotor. This is what I use to put them together. By using different magnetic materials and arranging the magnets in certain ways through stator assemblies and even the way these arced magnets are assembled, you can effectively alter the direction of the electron spins of the magnets and utilize that to generate motive force. If done properly, you could even tap into something called the exchange force pulse. This happens when a magnetic pole suddenly flips for a fraction of a second and increases in intensity by four to 500 times its normal strength. For a more in-depth explanation of this phenomenon, I'd highly recommend you read Howard Johnson's book, The Secret World of Magnets. Johnson is considered by many, including myself, to be the father of spintronics. The way you space the magnets on the rotor and stators is critical. I only printed two sets of magnet holders for these particular stators, but the magnets don't require any cutting and they require far less material to 3D print so I'll probably make some more of these up for further testing, as the results have been most favorable. They are based on Howard Johnson's work though, so that's not surprising. I estimate that I need at least three more of the arced magnet arrangements used on the rotor for proper testing, so I'll have to order some more magnets to take this further. But the results thus far have definitely been favorable. Several times during these series of tests, I broke past the one inch barrier, so that definitely warrants more experimentation. Overall, I've been pretty pleased with these stator assemblies, so I plan to build more to see if I can induce more spin cycles, or perhaps even continual rotation. Thanks for watching, and do great things.